Hey guys, what is up? Swim here, and this is my guide to mulliganing in Legends of Runeterra. So mulliganing is an extremely important skill in this game. It will literally, and I'm not exaggerating, make the difference between a good player and a great player. The ability to, you know, choose depending on matchup, depending on like attack token, a lot of factors, as well as like what else is in your hand which cards you want to start the game with will have a huge impact on the outcome of the game. So we're going to be breaking down with several examples in this video how you're going to have to think about that. So step number one in mulliganing, look at the opponent's deck and think to yourself, how fast is their deck playing at and how does that compare with my deck's speed? All right, and we're going to be using starter decks for these examples. So this is a Noxus PNZ discard deck. That's a pretty fast, aggressive deck. They want to end the game early, and we are a mid-range deck effectively. This is kind of like the slowest out of the three um, starter decks, and you know we're going to be kind of playing for the middle period of the game, not playing super, super slow, but definitely slower than our opponent's deck. What this means is because he's playing fast, we want to kind of match his speed in this case and not let him try to get under us, right? So we want to make sure that he's not going to be able to get too much value off of us keeping something very large on hand, like for example, a Trindamir. Next, let's go ahead and look at who has the attack token. Step number two is really, really important because determining who has the attack to token will actually influence your ability to take a mulligan or not in certain hand states, right? So for example, if I have a three or four mana unit that is kind of important to get the attack token on, something like, for example, I don't know, Frenzied Skitterer is a decent example, like a solid unit that you could take or leave, but the difference might be, you know, do I need a three drop for this attack? Am I the aggressor? That's going to be a really important thing to keep in mind. So these are the first two steps before you even look at the cards in your hand, know whether you have the attack token and who the opponent is, and most importantly, who's playing the faster deck. So we're going to be starting off really easy. This is a very, very basic example. In this mulligan, well, Avalanche is very good. He's an aggressive deck, and we don't really have, like, too much that's going to clunk up the Avalanche. Omenhawk is, of course, great. This is going to be, like, pretty hard uh, for Omenhawk to be a bad card in this deck, in a mid-range deck. Like, keeping this value one drop is just pretty much always going to be good. And then Braum is fine as well, although not necessarily amazing, because you really need to take heart for Braum to be a great option. But we've got Avalanche so we're feeling good. Trindamir, we're gonna replace. He's way too expensive, even though he's great. We'd like to draw into him later. As powerful as this card is, as a new player, like, don't be trapped by trying to keep something that takes so much mana in your opening hand just because it's big and shiny, okay? So this was a super basic example of a mulligan. We're gonna get more advanced as we go. All right, so for this next example, we're gonna pretend that my opponent is playing a control deck, a very slow deck. Now, obviously, they're not, but I'm playing against the bots and they all have these aggro things, so we're just gonna have to imagine, okay? So, uh, decks typically in card games tend to be at kind of a few different speeds, and we say aggro is decks that are fast, mid-range is decks that are kind of medium speed, and control are decks that are slow on average, right? And it's basically a spectrum. And what I would like to say as effectively a rule of thumb is that you typically want to be a little slower than your opponent or a lot faster, right? Burn that into your brain. Uh, and that's because of Nexus Health as a resource. So if your deck is just a little bit greedier than your opponent's, well, you're going to be in a good situation because they're going to get a bit of more, a bit more Nexus damage on you. But because your deck is stronger, you will have that 20 health buffer before you die. You'll stabilize and you'll come out on top. On average, there will be a lot of exceptions, but you're typically better positioned when your deck is a little bit slower than your opponents. But if your deck is much slower than your opponents, if theirs if theirs is much faster than yours they can sometimes kill you before you're able to kind of come online in your big way, okay? So keep that in mind. And that is why on average, and there's a lot of exceptions to this, but you might see aggro beats control, control beats mid-range, and mid-range beats aggro. So with that in mind, we are playing an aggro deck and we're going to be playing at imaginary against a control deck. So let's look at this opening hand and think about how we want to mulligan it. Okay, so we look our attack token, we're attacking on odds, doesn't change too much in this case, and we're gonna go ahead and decide to kick Glimpse Beyond and keep everything else. 
The reason for that is pretty straightforward. We really need to put on a ton of pressure really early. Again, you want to be a lot faster than your opponent or a little slower than them. In reality, we our win condition is to just burn through really, really, really quickly and hope that we are able to deal enough damage before they come online to get there. Glimpse Beyond, you know, a card that will kill an ally to draw your card. I'm spending mana and I'm killing an ally to draw a card. That's a slow card. It gives me long-term advantage, but I don't want to play for the long term here. I'm definitely in a situation where I need to go even faster and try to rush down quickly. These two ones in hand, I'm perfectly happy to keep two different ones because I just want to shove my cards as fast as possible and try to win this game out. So that's going to be how we're going to mulligan that spot. All right, so for this next hand, very interesting. Let's go ahead and assume our opponent is a Vladimir Braum, kind of mid-range uh, from like, you know, uh, Noxus Demacia, right? That's what we see. And we're thinking to ourselves, okay, that is a, it's a mid-range deck. It's very combo-y. They try to kind of like stay alive and then like burst you down in the mid-game with like a lot of spells on one turn. So how are we going to mulligan for that? Well, Scaled Snapper is a pretty fantastic card. I think you can just go ahead and keep this in general. Um, a 325 is just a pretty phenomenal stat line for a card. It gets all kinds of places. Uh, whereas River Shaper, I think this is a weak card in general, but on top of that, it's very vulnerable to a deck like that because that deck has just a ton of ways to deal one damage, right, before River Shaper can get the strike off. This is also a bit of a combo piece, River Shaper. You want to be drawing this when you have ways to actually protect it or make sure that strike gets off, and we have none, right? So we're going to go ahead and drop the River Shaper first and foremost. Let's look at Eager Apprentice next. When I'm summoned, refill two spell mana. Well, we've got Get Excited in hand. That's pretty good. So, effectively, Eager Apprentice is sort of a conditional zero mana 2-1, right? She gives you the mana back that you spend for her, which is not bad. Uh, against a deck like that, you could slow them down a little bit. And, unlike River Shaper, you're not really committing... So I was saying River Shaper's health was bad because they can just kill it. Well, that's because you're spending three mana on something that just dies. Whereas if they kill Eager Apprentice, she's not so bad anymore, right? It's zero mana, so no big deal, no big deal at all, right? Okay, so let's look at Get Excited. To play discard one, deal three to anything. So this is our spell that we're going to be using with the Eager Apprentice. And we think about how that list is going to break down. So they run uh, cards like Scarthane Stefan. They're pretty impervious to removal because they have a lot of combat tricks that are going to give their units health, like Bloodsworn Pledge as well. Even if you do get something like Braum into removal range, it's usually really, really hard to, you know, get it killed with a card like this. So actually, Get Excited doesn't really look great here. Let's go ahead and mulligan that. And what that means is, all of a sudden, now that Eager Prentice doesn't have a spell guaranteed to latch onto, we're not going to want to keep her either. Sorry, Eager Prentice. Okay, but this is a pretty good example of how cards in mulligan are definitely going to be kind of contingent on other cards. Your choice of mulligan isn't just, you know, this card, this card, this card in this matchup. Depending on what you choose to mulligan in this situation, it will affect your other mulligan decisions. All right, this is a very interesting one. Let's check this one out. We are using the Ionia Noxus starter deck, the very aggressive deck, and our opponent's running Spider Swarm, also pretty aggressive. So how are we going to mulligan this hand? This one's a bit tricky. Mystic Shot is a good early game option, deal two to anything. But if we think about what their deck represents, think about how spiders play out. They have a lot of things that need to be killed at three health, which is like at least, you know, maybe you'll get some value out of killing like a frenzied skitterer or something like that. And a lot of things that die at one health, but for the most part, they don't actually run value engines you want to disrupt. So while Mystic Shot is a good early game option, it's not really essential in a hand like this. We've got Jinx. Jinx is a very powerful card, but it does cost four mana. And then Thermogenic Beam, which is kind of a wild card in this case. So how to mulligan this spot? Well, the correct answer is to mulligan two Mystic Shots and keep Jinx and Thermogenic Beam. This is probably very counterintuitive, but effectively the way Spider Deck is going to play, uh, this kind of Spider Deck, is it's very reliant on Elise. So being able to set up a Thermogenic Beam as a three mana deal three is going to be very, very powerful in terms of stopping this guy's early game. And unfortunately, Mystic Shot in this situation isn't going to be as helpful. Jinx is very, very powerful, and of course, you know, it is kind of the entire idea of this list. So even though it costs four mana, we are going to keep it. That's just how powerful this card is. Now, in a slightly different hand, I would be very happy to keep one Mystic Shot, but 
because these are two powerful cards that I want to keep both of them, they are starving us for early game drops. Now, I think I can safely take the risk of kicking two Mystic Shots, try to get like a one drop or a two drop, because this deck has a pretty high amount of one drops and two drops, cards you can play on turn one and turn two. So, I'm okay just taking the risk and kicking only two Mystic Shots, but the point I'm making is imagine a hand where you have a one drop, a two drop, and then a Jinx, and then a Mystic Shot, I'm much more likely to keep that Mystic Shot, right? Because I have that early option that's going to give me that stability. But because Jinx and Thermogenic, Jinx is very powerful, Thermogenic Beam is really good in this matchup, and I need an early play, we're gonna kick both Mystic Shots, okay? So let's see what happens. So we kick both Mystic Shots. Ooh, that's not really a great hand. Kind of unfortunate, but I think that's the best we can do. Hopefully we'll get a one, we got a two. So not necessarily the best thing ever. Would have been better to get a turn one play, but as you can see, we still have a fine board state. We still have the Green Glade Duo that's going to turn into a Scaled Snapper on turn three, and eventually we'll be able to play Jinx. Not necessarily on three four. Depends how this game is going to play out. All right, let's go ahead and try one more. So this, we don't have to imagine anything, is a Noxus PNZ aggressive deck. We've seen this before, but I'm going to be playing one of my own. We're getting out of starter decks. We're getting a little more advanced here. So this is my Dawn Spiders list. It's a pretty powerful list. Let's see what we have here. Well, back to back immediately, you know, it's five mana. We can go ahead and rule that out. No big deal. We've got a situation where, you know, we've got a Vile Feast in hand. A Vile Feast, you know what? That's pretty great against these kinds of aggressive decks. In fact, that's its entire purpose as a card. It's an anti-aggro card. Most aggressive decks, you know, they run a lot of 2-1 units. Maybe he's running like Draven's Biggest Fan or something like that, right? Uh, sometimes they'll they'll run cards like Teemo, although this one isn't. But there's always things you can kill at one, and the Spiderling is very defensive. This card is, you know, an anti-aggro card at its heart, and it's great here. Now we've got two Cursed Keepers. Now this is very interesting, because Cursed Keeper is a combo piece. It's a card that really needs something that can kill it for you to gain value, right? And it's going to be Ravenous Butcher, uh, Glimpse Beyond, or Chronicler of Ruin, right? Those are going to be... The three cards, the three big ones that you're really looking for for Cursed Keeper to really enable it. So what are we going to do here? Because we have two Keepers and we don't have either of those cards. Now we are mulliganing one of our other cards in the form of Back to Back. So let's go ahead and kick one Keeper. We're going to do this because with these two mulligans, we have pretty good odds. You know, we've got draws as well. So we're seeing two cards after this. Then we're seeing one card right away on the turn one draw. And then by the time we're playing Keeper Butcher, that's one more card. And by the time we were looking for like Chronicler of Ruin, that's going to be turn four. So we've got pretty good odds of finding a combo for Keeper. But if we kept both of them, that would be a disaster. Um, and this works because we're mulliganing away back to back, right? Now, imagine a situation where this card was a keep. Let's say this was a second Vile Feast, and I was like, man, so amazing against this anti aggro, against this aggro deck. We got to keep both of them, right? Suddenly, keeping one keeper might not actually be as good. I definitely start to think a little bit about kicking this if I have less good odds of finding my combo beast because I'm only getting less things, right? So it's just an important mentality to keep in mind. So let's look at the converse of that situation. Let's imagine this Vile Feast was something else. Suddenly, we could think about keeping both keepers because we have, you know, more mulligans in this case, so we might be able to find enablers for both. We're not going to in this case, like that wouldn't make enough sense in this example, but it just goes to show, again, when you've got these combo pieces, your other mulligans are, are how many other cards you might have that are going to align with them is going to dictate how often you want to keep them. So let's go ahead and take this mulligan and see what happens. Okay, we've got an Elise and a Hapless Aristocrat. We're not really doing so well here. Let's see what the draw is. Ross of the Sundrer. So Cursed Keeper's not paying off yet. Okay, this time we've loaded up my control deck. This is my uh, ultimate control deck. I've built this with zero champions. Freljord and Shadow Elves, the typical control combo here. And this is a very slow and grindy deck. Our opponent is Ionia PNZ, a very fast, aggressive deck. You can see, you know, they're going to be rushing us down with elusives and very, very, like, early game value tools. So what do we got here? Well, we've got Avros and Sentry two Glimpse Beyonds, and a Rasa. So Rasa, I think, is like easy to say. It's a little bit too slow for this um, seven mana. I will put a note here, though. Keep, don't be fooled. There's a lot of matchups where you can keep seven mana cards. If you're control versus control, the value bombs are going to be cards you want to keep because there's no early pressure if both 
players are playing very slow. We will keep the uh, we will kick the Rossi here in this case. We definitely don't want to glimpse beyonds. I think that's pretty easy to say. I mean, he's going to be a deck that's going to be, you know, accelerating his own game plan, and we really want to just decelerate his game plan. Glimpse beyond is just slows. Yeah, it, it doesn't slow the game down. It basically slows my game plan down without really affecting his, just to get me more late game resource, which I don't really want here, right? So this is a decent mulligan, and under like a mid-range matchup, this might be a totally fine mulligan, but I'm gonna kick the other Glimpse Beyond as well, because we have a very, very slow start here. We don't know what cards we're drawing. We have more unknowns than normal, because these two cards that we're mulliganing, we don't know what they're going to turn into. So we want to go a little bit deeper to try to make sure we have something we can latch onto. And Glimpse Beyond is just too slow of a card. Like I said, you want to be a lot faster than your opponent or a little slower. Keep that in mind. Two, uh, one Glimpse Beyond and one Avro's Entry, because even this card, it's a unit on turn two, but most of the value it gets is by drawing, right? I don't necessarily have mana to play all this if I want to compete him in the early game and make sure I don't get blown out. I need to make sure he doesn't go under me and kill me before I'm online, right? So even Avaros and Sentry isn't like a great early game stabilizer. He's kind of a long-term value tool. So we have to make sure we're kicking these and playing very aggressively because we need to be hitting stabilizers, AoE cards, Avalanche, Hapless Aristocrat, Warden's Prey, very, very important to hit. We will keep the one Sentry, but it's important to note, he is kind of like, he's a really, really good value tool and that's why we have to keep him, but he does not really help us stabilize the early game. Let's take this mulligan here and see what happens. Pretty, pretty bad. We do get a black spear, you know, but we got the avalanche. So even though we got a vengeance and, you know, a beer is okay. Um, not necessarily the best draws, but imagine how much worse it would be if we had a glimpse beyond here on top of that. We just have a huge potential to just get blown out in the early game. All right, for this situation, we're going to assume our opponent is using a control deck, all right? So control is going to be like Shadow Isles, Freljord. They stall the game out, blow up your board, kill your individual units, and just kind of win late um, with a big drop. So in this case, let's go ahead and think about how we would play this. Well, we're playing, uh, you know, a deck of my own dawn spiders uh and the idea behind this list is it is a mid-range list see we're out of the starter list these are getting a bit more complicated so how are we gonna play this well vanguard redeemer is a draw tool which is a slow concept right it slows the game down the question is do we want to speed up or slow down right and the answer here is we're gonna want to slow down with this deck we are a mid-range deck against control, and the very nature of this mid-range deck against this control matchup is that it's going to be really hard to kill the opponent fast enough. It's harder to make this deck play very fast when it wants to in a way that's actually going to be uncontrollable. So the best bet is to try to take him to a longer game and just win over time via that consistent pressure. And Vanguard Redeemer is going to be very valuable for that, right? So in this case, we're going to go ahead and keep Redeemer in hand. We like the ability to draw cards. Chronicler of Ruin, well, this can revive a card. This can just copy Vanguard Redeemer as well. So this can be a 4-3-3, draw a card. That's also pretty great. It's going to be good in this matchup for the sustained pressure we're going to need because we can't go fast enough to go under his deck. We're going to have to slow down to try to match it in this case. Uh, Ravenous Butcher and Fleet Feather Tracker, these are very fast cards. Ravenous Butcher is only good when we've drawn Cursed Keeper, which we don't have, and we also have Chronicle of Ruin. If we find a Cursed Keeper, we might be able to, you know, get rid of it, pop it with Chronicler instead of Ravenous Butcher if we want to, like, speed it up a little bit more. So we don't really want Butcher. Fleet Feather Tracker, it's a very fast card, you know, we're playing a one mana card on turn one, very aggressive and getting a little bit of chip damage. So the question is, what do we do here? We are attacking on turn one, and that is a big clue. So it's a pretty weird situation, but the play here I'm going to make is replace the Ravenous Butcher and nothing else. So it seems a little weird, and if we were attacking on evens instead of odds, I would actually probably kick the Fleet Feather Tracker as well, but this card's ability to potentially represent a little poke of two damage pressure is really nice. Even though we can't end this game early enough to, you know, not to, you know, try to not slow the game down, we do need to slow the game down, but we need to apply early and consistent pressure and Fleet Feather Tracker being played on turn one where we're attacking on turn one right now is going to be a part of that. 
Butcher fits this game plan not at all. Um, so Tracker, Vanguard Redeemer, and Chronicler is a great mulligan and gives us an out for Cursed Keeper as well, which is pretty rare in this deck because, of course, you don't always have Chronicler. So that's going to be our mulligan here.